Hi, I'm Allie Buckman, co-founder of the Potomac Bead Company, and today I want to share with you the Magnolia Bracelet. In this bracelet, you will learn how to do a right angle weave pico trim. You'll learn how to use two hold storm duo beads, facing them in multiple directions and learning how to pick up the beads. For a complete list of materials, go ahead and watch to the end of the video where I'll list out the colors and the quantities as well as the materials that are needed for this Magnolia Bracelet. It is a one needle project that will be working down the center and then coming back and reinforcing the rows while adding in our Potomac's clasp, which I've decorated with one of the Rivoli's. So go ahead and watch along with me. And to make along, remember you can always purchase from us at potomacbeads.com and potomacbeads.eu. There's also links below the video that will get to you the products to link online. So if you do want to make some easy shopping decisions, you can click on those links as well. To get started, I want you to get five feet of your beading thread on a size 10, 11, or 12 needle, and we'll get ready to start the Magnolia bracelet. So to begin my Magnolia bracelet, what I'm going to be looking for is to do an alternating pattern of my storm duos. I have five feet of beading thread on a size 11 needle, and we're gonna go ahead and add storm duos with a series of green, that metallic emerald on either side of two different colors. I have the white lila luster, and then I have the metallic violet. So I'm going to be using those in series of four going through one of the Storm Duo holes with an 11-0 in between. To begin, I have an 11-0 seed bead that I'm going to use as a stop bead or a bead to make sure that the beads do not fall off my thread. I'm going to take my needle and thread through the bead two times, which is going to secure it at the end, and eventually then I will take the bead off. So you will see two pieces of thread showing along the side. From here, the most important thing is to make sure that we pick up the Storm Duo in the correct rotation. So to pick up the Storm Duo, we are going to always be picking it up through the smaller side or the smaller hole. When you're looking at it, it looks like an S shape. We're gonna be going through one of the curves of the S, not the back side of the S. So to begin, again, we're gonna pick them up in a series of four. I have one emerald, two of my pink, another one of my emerald. So there's my grouping of four, and I'm gonna let that slide down to my stop bead. Next, pick up an 11-0, and I'm using the Duracoat Galvanized Silver, and then I'm gonna pick up another series of four Storm Duos. This time, in the middle, is going to be my metallic purple. And again, I'm making sure that I pick up all the Storm Duos through that curve on the S, the inner curve. Again then, another 11-0 gets put on, and I just repeat the pattern very simply. So you're doing the pink pattern, going through and adding four beads on with the two middle in the pink color, putting on an 11-0, and then doing the same thing with the purple. Again, the key is just to make sure that when you are picking them up, you are picking them up in the same direction, going through the same side of the whole of the storm duo and the storm duos are flat on both sides so it's not going to um, have a curve on either side continue to build this the whole way to the end of the project and what we'll do then is we will add on one side of our clasp and then i'll show you how we're going to come down decorate one side and then kind of go to the other as well once you have a problem approximately 16 of your magnolia flowers, you're gonna go ahead and get ready to add the clasp on to the project. Now the clasp is just an open clasp and it is a Potomac push clasp that you can stick a Rivoli inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick in my uh, violet one there and have that in. And what we're gonna do is attach the clasp to begin with. At the very, very last end here, and the last piece, I'm gonna take my clasp and I'm going to actually add in three 11 O seed beads. So I'm adding one, two, three seed beads, which are gonna sit at the very end of my storm duos. From there, I'm gonna go up through the back of the clasp. And when I go up through the back of the clasp then, 
I'm going to come down through the two beads, the first two beads after the clasp. Now this is only putting one piece of thread through the clasp area. I'm not going to worry about that because I'll have an opportunity to come back down the project and reinforce that clasp and add extra thread into the clasp. What I am going to do now though is I'm going to jump from the last hole or the first hole of the Storm Duo to the last hole of the Storm Duo. You can see the way that the magnolia flowers are going to sit is going to be every other. So the purple are all going to be facing up and the pink will all be facing down or vice versa depending on which way you turn them. So you want to make sure the two Storm Duo beads in the middle are sitting in the same direction and then our green little stems are sticking together. When I come down the side of the Storm Duo Magnolia bracelet, I'm also going to need some Ados handy and I have those in a Toho um, Color Trends Metallic Primatic Green. So coming off the 11O here, I'm going to add three more 11Os to catch onto that silver bead, or to catch onto that green bead. So three go on, and the number would be three as well if you were going on to the purple. As I come through the green beads, the green beads are going to sit, that emerald, right next to one another. So I'm not adding any beads in between, I'm sewing directly through them. So we're going right through those beads. As I go right through the beads then, in between the sections where there are um, the jumping from stems to colors, that's where we're going to add in some more beads. We're going to do a little bit of right angle weave with one needle. You're going to add an 11 o Then I want you to add four 11 o's So I have on four. Let that drop down towards your project. Take your needle and thread and go back through the first bead in that group of four. So the thread is coming out to the left of the bead here and I'm going into the right of that bead. This is going to make a little square or a little diamond, almost like a pico trim there. And then I'm going to add one more 11 OC bead. That's going to go through my first center of my magnolia flower. And you can see those beads almost sit in like a little um, pyramid then. When you're between your flowers, you're going to add just one 80 seed bead to look like the piston of the flower or the middle. Add an 80 and sew through the second hole of the next color of the Storm Duo. Again, between the stems and the actual flowers, you're going to repeat that section of adding one 11, then your four to create your diamond. Let that all kind of drop down next to your beads. Skip the first bead there and go through the second, that first bead in the group of four. And you're going to go and create a seed beaded loop. Push that seed beaded loop towards the first seed bead. Add one more seed bead and then sew through the two stems of the purple magnolia. And there you have your pattern. Then again, we're coming through that we have the two stems. Oops, bring our pink ones down here. So we should only be catching on to the pink ones as we do this process. So the green next to the pink, kind of turn those up. And as we go into the next pink section here, we need to do our series of our diamond again. So one bead goes on, then four beads. Circling it back up, making our loop, adding one more 11, and sew through the first pink Storm Duo. Give a nice tight pull then, make sure you don't have any extra thread exposed, and add your 8 OC bead. So this continues the whole way down the project till we get to the very start of it. And then once we get to the start of it, we're going to go ahead and add our other side of our clasp on, and then we're going to jump to the top and do it along the purple flowers as well. As you get to the end of the design, we're going to go ahead and put on the other side of our clasp. So in this case here, it's a push clasp. So I'm going to make sure to take out the little trigger end 
and I'm gonna attach that to the other side. To attach to the other side, I'm going to mimic the first side where I have three beads that go along the side of the storm duo and then two before the clasp. So as I come out the end of the last bead here, I'm going to add three beads that would have been on the side of the storm duo and then two beads before the clasp. Go up through the clasp and then back down through those two beads that sit on the end. To pull that back towards the middle then, remember we have a stop bead on, so we're just gonna leave that there, and I'm gonna do three beads to connect to the outer hole of the opposite side of the Storm Duo. We'll connect it to the middle then as we come back down the clasp one more time. So I have three beads on here after coming out the last two, and I'm gonna catch two onto the side of the Storm Duos that we have not gone down yet. So we're actually done going through the purple, and now we're on to the Lila Luster. So there we have that little triangle there created with the clasp. And again, I like to sew to the right, so I'm gonna completely kind of flip my beads here and we'll come down the opposite side doing the same thing. So it's gonna sit a little bit off to the side like they're swaying kind of in a garden. What I'm gonna do here again is continue the same pattern. Between my groupings of my flowers, I'm gonna add my little right angle weave with the two beads on either side. And between my colored beads, between the pink, I'm gonna add my 8 OC bead. You'll notice that the 11 OC beads are sticking up a little bit. As we come back and grab and add in our crystal beads along the outer edge, that will make those lay down flat. So again, we're just going to go back through now that we're onto that second row, pour out a little bit more of your 11 O's and start with your pattern, the same one as the purple, along down the pink line. Coming out the end of the design, I'm going to go from the last storm duo to the clasp again following that same pattern of adding three 11 o's and then catching on to the two 11s that are before the clasp bringing the thread and needle then out i'm going to go through the clasp and then back down those 11 o seed beads which is going to get me two times through those beads I'm then gonna go down the middle bead right there along the center. And I'm gonna snake out to the outer edge. And it doesn't matter whether or not you start with the right side or the left side or the pink or the purple side, that's up to you. We're gonna get ready to add our crystals in. Again, you can have fun with this and add different beads in the holes. It doesn't need to be crystals. At this point, you just have your four millimeter bead and your 11 O seed beads that you'll be using. I'm gonna be picking up that Tourmaline Swarovski four millimeter round bead at the bottom of all of the flowers. So that's gonna sit right at the connection point. In order to connect on the outer edges here, we're just gonna run some 11 O seed beads up the side. So to get to the first space to add my crystal in, I wanna take my thread and needle through the Storm Duo bead and through the 8 o that sits right in the middle of the flower. From here, we're gonna add three 11s and go up to the top hole of the 11 O seed bead. That's gonna create a little arching effect. Add in your four millimeter bead and so connecting the top hole of that triangle unit that you created. So you can see then it's just gonna sit right there on that edge between those beads. Again, then arching over to the next point, we're gonna go down our side bead of that four unit. And once I come down the side bead then, add in three beads, three of my 11s, through the center eight, without getting the thread tangled. Once you're through that center eight O seed bead, Add three more 11s and go up through the side bead, up through the side to the top of that little diamond that we created and out the top bead. Once I'm out that top bead, add in your four millimeter round 
and into the next top bead. When you're there, you're going to go down the side bead, add in three more 11s through the 8 0. So we're not going through the storm dew at all, you're just adding that arching effect. Three more 11s, and then you're going to connect on the side of that diamond that you created. So through the side bead, so through the top middle bead, add your four millimeter bead, and so through the next top bead. So you're gonna create that little arching effect right along the outer edge. Continue doing this the whole way down the bracelet, and then when we get to the end, we'll come back and add it along the top. When you're coming out the end of the bracelet, I'm gonna add three, I'm sorry, two of my 11 O's, and then sew up through the three along the side of the last Storm Duo. Sew through the two seed beads that lead to the clasp, and out through the clasp, which is gonna reinforce that clasp one more time. Coming down then, I'm gonna go, after going through the clasp, back down through those 11 OC beads one more time. And this is my last opportunity on this side of the bracelet. So because I am on this side for the last time, I wanna connect some thread here and tie off the starter thread. So I have the stop bead on, which needs to come off because the thread is exposed on the sides. I'm going to pull that stop bead off from the center. Let the thread relax a little bit in the middle and then along the sides. Add an 11 OC bead onto my thread and needle and then tie that thread end and my thread that I'm using together. That's gonna put a knot right at the base of that Storm Duo bead. I'm gonna double knot that. And then what I'm gonna do is get that thread and needle exposed to the top of the opposite side. So I'm going to go through, back through that seed bead and jump over to the three beads along the side here. Once I have those three beads along the side, it's time to progress and go with my crystals on the opposite side. So to add those in, I'm gonna take three elevens and sew through that first eight. So just like we did the other side, three elevens. So up through the side bead of that triangle or that diamond unit, up through the top bead, and then get ready to add in my four millimeter crystal going through then the next of that top side bead. And you'll notice because of the way that we're doing, every other side is gonna have the crystal versus that bright 8-0 oh seed bead. So you're seeing how it lays nicely on the left side. I'm gonna do the same thing on the right, adding in my crystals and my grouping of three seed beads. As you come to the end of the design, you're going to add your three seed beads if you want to, you can add a crystal here, but it's gonna fit more comfortable just like we did the starter side with three seed beads. And then taking this opportunity to reinforce the clasp one more time, going up through the three beads along the side of the Storm Duo, through those two center beads, and it's getting to be a tight fit, through the clasp one more time, and then back down through those two beads and further into the project. Further in the project then, down the middle somewhere, I will knot off the ends of the thread and finish the Magnolia bracelet. You can do this with a simple square knot and then a little bit of glue if you like the um, security of adding the glue. Or you can use your thread zap or thread burner and go that route. I'm gonna go underneath one of the bridge threads, create a loop, and then sew back through that loop pulling nice and tight, getting that knot in between those center beads. Take your thread, a couple more passes through some beads, and do that knot again. Going underneath that bridge thread there, 
which creates a loop. And then taking your thread and needle and sewing through that loop. Lastly, I'm going to take my thread zap or my thread burner, burn down the extra thread on both this finishing or ending side as well as the starting side. For this project, I could have also used the green wildfire thread, which would have tucked in nicely in the design. Again, for the materials for the Magnolia bracelet, I did use one tube of the metallic emerald storm duo and i used a tube of the metallic violet storm duo as well as the metallic white lila luster you're not using a full tube of any of these beads if you do want to make two bracelets go ahead and get two tubes of the metallic emerald and you'll have enough of the other two to do so i used about half a bag of the four millimeter round beads or a tube if you wanted to go that route, as well as just throwing in those Eidos in the Color Trends Metallic Prim Rose, which is a Toho 8O seed bead. The 11 O's were the galvanized silver in the Miyuki brand that were used in a majority of the project. For the clasp, again, what I wanted to use was the Potomac's clasp, which is a round push clasp. And this push clasp allows you to put something in the middle. It's set for a Rivoli, or you can glue in something flat. And just to add a little bit to the design, I decided that I wanted to take one of our more unique cabs. And this is a um, garden resin cab. And I'm going to take some E6000 glue and glue that cab into place to go along with the look of my bracelet. Again, just some E6000 glue will do, or you can pick up a crystal in the actual color of the crystals and glue that into the clasp as well. So if you do want to make the bracelet, again, you can go back to the beginning of the video where the materials are listed, or you can go to the uh, video below us here to the little date stamp that says and we'll provide links to all of the different materials, including the specific colors listed out there for you. As always, thank you so much for watching this fun bracelet. And if you do want to make one along, again, we have all the materials for you at PotomacBeads.com and PotomacBeads.eu. And remember, we do want to make you a better beater. So join our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. And we'd love for you to become part of the community there, engaging with others, sharing your ideas and your creativity, as well as, as, well as helping others along. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, give me a little thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you want to get regular updates. And in the comments too, tell us what you'd like to see, what you want to see more of, what kind of videos you're looking for. And we're happy always to help and to have suggestions from you guys in order to get more input, more feedback, and again, to make that better beater out of you. Thanks so much for watching and have fun creating.